Now, I've always been a massive fan of like a small, compact camera. Um, I even reckon this would be like a decent camera for like an FPV drone, you know? Well, maybe it ain't the best camera for an FPV drone, but um, one thing's probably pretty certain. Sony are never going to send me another pre-release camera again, so let's enjoy this one. What's going on, you lot? I hope you're all sweet. So, um, I've turned into one of them YouTubers, you know, the ones that get a camera before it's even released. And um, I always feel a bit dodgy about them kind of YouTubers. I think, can I actually trust you? This video is not sponsored by Sony. They are not endorsing me for making this video. However, they have allowed me to play about with this for the last few weeks. And um, I'm going to give you my very honest opinion because there are a few things that Sony need to work on on this camera. However, Overall, I think this camera is absolutely banging. It's definitely a massive leap in the right direction for vloggers and compact cameras in terms of video. So yeah, mate, let's get straight into the RX100. It's not the RX, I keep calling it that. It's the ZV1, mate. Let's go. So the body, mate, obviously the body is very, very similar to the RX100, except it's slightly changed ergonomically to better videographers, basically. The body is made of plastic, and as you can see, the screen flips out instead of flips up. Um, also, we have this record lamp. So when I hit record, bang in, mate. We can now actually tell if the camera's rolling or not. Like on my A7, I haven't got one. I'm bloody recording. Next thing I know, I turn it around. I haven't been recording for the last five minutes. I wanna go bang, mate. We've also got like a little animal on the top of the camera. Um, obviously, this is a wind muff, but it comes off. And you know how it comes off? Yes, we've got a hot shoe mount on the top of the camera. Amazing. We've all wanted one of these in a compact camera for so long. And guess what it's also got, mate? Yes, it's got a 3.5 mil jack so that we can chuck our external mics on and get much better quality audio for when we need it. This is banging, mate. Also, the whole mic system on top of the camera has been completely redesigned. Apparently, the audio is so much better. I've done my test and yes, it is much, much better. So this is the audio test going straight into the internal microphones on the Sony ZV-1, mate. This is somewhere where I used to ride my motorbikes when I was like 15, when I was a little nutter, you know, um, absolutely gorgeous. So what do you reckon of the internal mics? How do they sound? It's apparently got this new clear voice tech in it and this wind muff works so well outdoors. However, this is a really, really bad spot to test out how the wind muff performs because it's obviously not windy. So what I'm gonna do instead to emulate some wind, I'm gonna spin around very, very fast and erratically. Um, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the wind muff on so that we can compare it to see what it would be like if there was a shit ton of wind. So um, let's spin. I'm drunk. Yeah, let's give it a go now with a wind muff and compare. Boom, wind muff is now on. Let's now compare how this sounds spinning round to emulate some wind. Whoa, cheese. So um, yeah, how did that sound? How do they compare? Now, obviously we know we're gonna get better quality out of an external mic like this Rode Video Micro, it is obviously a shotgun mic, so it only picks up audio in that direction that the mic is actually pointing. And um, on this camera, it works like an absolute treat. So we are now going into the Rode Video Micro, which is obviously plugged in on the 3.5 mil jack attached to the hot shoe mount. How does this compare to the onboard mics? Obviously the camera's now like twice as big because I've got this uh, microphone on, but... It should sound much, much better. Now, let me cut this between the onboard mic with the wind muff on and the wind muff off. So this is the audio test going straight into the internal microphones on the Sony ZV-1, mate, so that we can get a really good comparison between the three. However, for me personally, having this mic on a camera this big just doesn't make a lot of sense. I definitely think there's a lot of advantages of having this mic on this camera, having the hot shoe and the 3.5 mil jack for when you're doing at home, in your home studio, YouTube setup, talking head kind of stuff. That is when this is gonna come so in handy. However, for me, if I'm out and about, I much prefer just having 
this setup in my pocket, whip it out, here we go, mate, bosh, we're recording, you know? For me, I would much rather a small compact setup, no matter how much better the quality of audio is gonna be, because the audio from this straight in camera is more than good enough for what I need for them small moments when I'm out and about shooting content. And the best feature about this camera for me, we've, thank God, we've got back the ND filters. On the RX100 Mark VII, there was no ND filters, and we had to stop down all the way to F11 and then crank our shutter speed in high key lighting situations. Ugh, mate, it's just not a bit of me. We can't keep 180 degree shutter rule. It just annoyed the hell out of me. So thank God we've got the ND filter back in here. It's a two stop ND filter so we can keep our 180 degree shutter rule even in super high key lighting conditions. I'm buzzing, mate. So the sensor, the sensor is the same family of one inch sensor that you get in the RX100 series, an amazing sensor, great in low light. And the best thing is, we've got the autofocus features from the RX100 Mark 7. So we've got the real-time eye autofocus tracking. It's the autofocus technology from the A9. So it's pretty much the best autofocus that you can get in any Sony camera. So that is incredible. We get all of the color profiles like HLG3, S-Log, S-Log 2, S-Log 3. So we can get a really good amount of dynamic range out of this camera. However, we are still in 8-bit. Another great feature that they've got in this camera is face recognition exposure. That means that the camera is gonna expose for your face instead of exposing for the entire shot. So if you go from a really high key setting to a low key setting or vice versa, like vloggers do, they just kind of walk around like they own the place, you know, bloody vloggers. And they frequently go from different exposures. The camera is gonna keep the exposure on your face so that you, as the subject of your video, you're always the bloody star of the show and you're you bloody vloggers. You are gonna stay exposed for your entire shot. I think that's a really cool feature, especially for people that are very much starting out. So Sony reckons that the stabilization in this camera is 11 times better. Not quite sure what that means, but I can tell you that the active steady shot in this camera is incredibly smooth. It almost makes me think you don't even really need like a gimbal or something for this camera. It is literally that smooth. However, we do get a crop in this mode and it is quite a substantial crop. Already having a lens that's 24 mil and cropping it in even further to like a 30 mil. I mean, it's a little bit unusable if you're in the vlogging mode. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, I don't mind being the star of my own show, but this does take it to a bit of an extreme. So let's check out what the stabilization is like in the standard stabilization mode whilst we're vlogging. Obviously, this is the slightly wider version. You basically get the full 24 mil when you're doing this. So we are now on the active stabilization. Stabilization should be... So How nice is this field, mate? I'm a lucky geezer. So obviously the stabilization should be so much smoother. However, is a bit of a crop and it's all about me. I don't really like it well, you know. I think this stabilization mode is amazing if you're shooting a subject, you're not at arm's length vlogging. If you're shooting something else, this stabilization is so valuable. But for me, when I'm actually vlogging, I would much rather just be using the standard steady shot on this camera so that you don't get that huge crop. Right, so we're gonna chuck the ZV-1 on the little Crane M2. Jack's gonna be my subject again. Um, he's become a little bit popular on the old channel, you know. So let's track Jack with this 4K 25 frames a second. See what he's saying, mate. Let's go. This combo is the nuts, mate. How smooth is this? Right, Jack is gonna walk up one of these little alleyways. I'm gonna walk up the one beside it and we're gonna track from the side just to see how nice this stabilization is, mate. Tell you what, I love this little red record lamp. I actually know I'm recording. So sick. That's it, keep going. Nice, touch faster for me. Bang. Mate, this looks peng. This is like travel videos, like, perfect. Yeah, nice, mate. Now we'll come back. I'm gonna zoom all the way in yeah. at the maximum amount to really, like, put the camera through it. The tighter the shot, the harder it is for the camera to stabilize. Yeah. And the gimbal, so, right, action, let's go. Mate, this looks peng. Yeah, nice, mate. Bosh. Another thing you'll notice about the camera is there's no bloody lens ring. On the original RX100 Mark series, 
Mark series on the original RX 100s. We've got a nice little lens ring that you can pretty much set to any setting that you want. Now, as good as the autofocus is in this camera, I sometimes use manual focus in compact cameras. Personally, I would have loved to have seen a manual focus ring on this camera. You can still do manual focus, but you use the scroll wheel. I just think that's a bit weird. And it's like in stops. So it's not like a linear pull. Um, which is a little bit annoying. I wish it had the lens ring on there. That would have been great. Sony is obviously saying we're so confident in our autofocus that you're not going to have to use anything else. And I'll be honest, the autofocus in this is the nuts. But old Jerusalem, I just want to give a very quick shout out to the sponsor of today's episode, Skillshare. By now, if you don't know what Skillshare is, I'd be a little bit worried. Skillshare is an online learning platform. It's got thousands of different classes on tons of different topics. Loads of creative ones like filmmaking, photography, illustration, design, and for me, music. I've been dipping and diving into doing a little bit of mixing. And as you all know, I done Young Guru's course on learning how to mix 101. That was an amazing course. It's actually taught me how to mix. So as soon as we're out of all this quarantine and that, I'm gonna get my hands on some decks and I'm gonna be doing a bit of mixing. And thanks to that class on Skillshare, it's given me the tools to actually be able to do that. And the best thing about Skillshare is with your annual membership, it comes to under 10 pound a month. And the first thousand people to click the link in my description, mate, will get two months for free of Skillshare. Not gonna lie, if you're gonna get two months when you're quarantining in lockdown, I wouldn't say that's a bad time to get two months for free. So thank you Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Back to the ZB-1. We've got the same battery from the RX100 series, the NP-BX1. It would have been nice to have upgraded these, but we are on the same batteries. We've got an unlimited record limit, even at 4K. I got up to 46 minutes before the battery ran out, so that's pretty sick. So onto the last feature of this camera, which I think Sony got absolutely wrong. I love that we've got that really fast 1.8 lens in this camera, however, why have we stuck to 24 mil as our widest focal length? Honestly, Sony vloggers like to vlog at arm's length. And this is just in the standard stabilization mode. When you go into the active stabilization mode, whoa, we get a bit of a crop, mate. Now for me, vlogging should be all about the environment. It should be all about where you are. Look, here I am, I'm in my studio. But with a focal length of 24 mil on a one inch sensor, it's like, I feel like I am the star of the show. I don't want it always to be about me. I want it to be about where I am. I want to show you where I am. I'm kind of just showing you me. Yes, you can kind of stick on a little tripod to give you that much longer length. However, what's the point of having a compact camera if it's not compact? If this had an 18, a 16 mil lens, whoa. I wouldn't even bother taking my A7 camera on a holiday or something if this had 18, 16 mil. All we need is a wide angle lens. That's all we need. Listen, at the end of the day, if you can't put a wider angle lens in this camera, just tell us. Really sorry, we can't do it. Then we'd be like, you know what, fair dues. So, put a wide angle lens in this camera. It will sell like chips down the beach. So on to the last feature of this camera, the price. I think Sony have smashed it with this price. 699 quid, that is a bit of me. People that are starting out, people that are getting into it, this is such a more affordable option. All of the video features that you get in the RX100 Mark 7, but better, the ND filter, better onboard mic, better screen, and we've got a hot shoe mount and better stabilization. This is a much better option. And to be honest with you, I reckon the Sony ZV-1, the Crane M2, and the Rode Video Micro is the ultimate content creator unit package under a grand. I genuinely don't think there is a better combo than this under a grand that has so much potential for so many different kinds of content creation. If you think there's a better one out there, please tell me, put it in the comments, I wanna know. If anyone asks me, right, what should I get? I wanna start content creation. This is it, I, I don't wanna be telling them anything else. This is it. Will I be getting one of these? Yes, I will. I'm actually gonna buy myself one of these. Um, I'm gonna be selling my RX100 Mark Seven. Got no need for it, mate. This has got all of the video features and more that the RX100 Mark Seven has got. I might even be able to make the same amount of money that this costs. I can almost trade that in. 
Halo ZV-1. So yeah, that's the plan. Sony, please put a wide angle lens in this and we'd be all sweet, we'd be all happy. What do you think about the ZV-1? Is it good, is it not good? What do you reckon? Would you buy it? Is it even worth getting? Let me know. I honestly think it's amazing, I think it's great, I think it's bang on, other than the wide angle lens. And I think I've finally found a camera that I can recommend to pretty much everyone. I don't feel like there's many people that couldn't use this camera. Right at the bottom end, it's great. Even right at the top end for a B camera. Like, come on, it's banging, mate. I just wouldn't recommend strapping it to your drone. Clearly just not a good idea. Anyway, people, thanks so much for watching, and I'll be catching you lot in the next one, mate. Bosh! Oh,